How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this kinetic typography animation here. We're doing it in Eevee. It's super quick to render. It's really easy to make. Let's get into that. But before we do, I want to say that the project file for this animation is available in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that on all three tiers. If you're unaware of the Patreon, I release several exclusive tutorials a month. After I finish live streaming, all the live streams get uploaded to Patreon exclusively on tier two and tier three. And I release 10 procedures materials a month among some other really fun stuff on there if you want to check it out it's linked in the description now let's get into how to make this so i'm going to be opening up a blender blank document this works in almost every version of blender not a lot has changed in terms of what we're going to do here so let's go ahead and make the object so let's get in some text here and i'm going to hit tab and i'm going to write whatever i want i like caps stuff that's in caps lock so i'm gonna do the same thing just in caps lock uh, for me, I think it looks best because it fills in the whole thing and it's going to take the shape of our square in a little bit. So let's go ahead and into the text properties. We're going to go to left to center and we're going to write here to center as well. And that's going to center out that text. I'm going to hit RX90 on this and move that to there. Let's give it a little bit of thickness and change the font. So if you go here to font and you click on this, it should bring up all the fonts you have on your computer. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a random one. So let's go with this one. I like that. And then let's go and add in some geometry. So we'll go here and extrude it a little bit this way. And then we'll give the depth, we'll give it 0.005 on that. And that just kind of bevels out the uh, text, which makes it really nice. And you can actually give it a little something more like 0.007, kind of gives it a better bevel. Really, that part is completely up to you. Now, let's right click this and convert to mesh. And that's gonna make this, like I said, right into a mesh, but we can't actually deform this. It'll look really, really ugly. So we need to remesh it. So I'm gonna click up here to the wireframe view, go to the modifiers, and I'm gonna add in a remesh modifier. What that's gonna do is that weird thing. If you go here to the solid view, it's all messed up. So what you need to do is uncheck, remove disconnected pieces. It brings everything back. And then we'll go on the octree depth until you like how it's looking. So I think one more in octree depth of eight uh, works the best for me and I'm gonna right click and shade and if you click smooth shading it does all that fun stuff for you maybe an octree depth of nine there you go so nine for me works the best and it's a really dense mesh which is exactly what we want it is gonna get really mesh heavy but we don't entirely have another option here so I'm gonna apply this and go here to solid view and now we have this really nice pretty high poly text but that's just the way it has to be for this. I'm gonna go ahead and shift A and get a uh, cube here. So it's really big. I'm gonna go to the wireframe view and I'm gonna start um, scaling this down. First, it needs to come out a little bit. So I like to use here the scale tool. This doesn't have to be an exact science. So we'll go to here and then we'll go to right about there. So this is going to be our object. Let's go back to that text and move this guy right to here so he fills out the area really nice something like that and then right up here we'll we'll continue to edit this as we go now let's go ahead and subdivide this guy so first off let's hit a control a and apply scale just to make sure everything is correct so when we deform it it deforms the way that we want i'm going to go ahead and show you how this works in practice first off we're going to subdivide this cube so right click subdivide and bring it up to 30. so that's really nice i'm actually will subdivide it one more time make it pretty dense now I'm gonna go ahead and bevel this guy. Right here on limit method, we'll put it on angle, and then we'll bring the segments up, something like that, and then we'll bring that offset down a little bit, right click, shade smooth. So now we have both things nice and beveled, looks really clean. So how do we deform both of these guys correctly? We can't just apply a simple deform to both of these guys, it won't work the way we want. So we're gonna do a fun little thing that I've never taught before, which is a lattice. Let's get this lattice here, and make sure it covers the whole thing. We'll get that scale tool and scale it out like this. You kind of want it to cover it up, but keep roughly the shape that we're working with. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale it in like this, like that, and we're good. So how do we get this lattice to work? First, let's click on the lattice settings and give um, 48 on each side just subdividing this lattice really nicely. So this subdivision is completely up to you, 
but uh, this this subdivision so far for the lattice really works great. And whenever we're viewing it, we can just click this little thing right here and it removes that from the view so we can actually see what we're working with. So what we need to do is add a lattice modifier to all of our objects. So I'm clicking the cube. We're gonna get in a lattice. So lattice modifier, we'll select the lattice. We'll go to the text and do the exact same thing. Lattice modifier and select the lattice. We'll click this guy. Now I'm gonna take this here and we're gonna go here to simple deform. And then I'll just remove that here. And then now you can see everything is deforming the exact way that we want and it works well and it looks really great. So I'm gonna put the angle at zero for now just to even it out and let's go ahead and put our text on all of the sides. All right, so now we have this. You wanna keep in mind that when this thing rotates, you want the text to be uh, the same orientation. So see right here, when I move it like that, it's not really reading correctly. So if I do that right here on the negative 180, on the Y, now it's readable when we spin it, and that's super, super important for it to be readable. So whenever you are duplicating it, keep that in mind. So let's bring that lattice back into view. And since we duplicated all the text, everything will have that lattice modifier. And then again, we can rotate it. Now it's a little bit high poly, but that's okay. We still got what we're looking for. So I'm gonna rotate it to right about there, just so that everything's readable. And now we need to be able to spin everything. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, add in an empty. Plane axis, I'm gonna hit A to select everything. Control P, parent the object. And now when we click on the empty, I'm gonna go, go ahead and remove all the gizmos. And we rotate it on the X. It rotates really cool and really nicely being parented to that empty. And now when you also move the empty, um, everything moves with it. So that's really, really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hit H on that lattice just so it doesn't fill up the whole scene. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a plane here, scale it up to pretty nice size. I'm gonna hit tab. I'm gonna click the edge select, go here. I'm gonna hit E and then Z to bring that up really nicely. We're making a background by the way. And we're gonna get the bevel modifier on that plane, bring it to here bring up the segments, and then we can also scale out the, this here, shade smooth. Let's click on that empty and bring everything up here so that nothing's touching the ground. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key for me, and go to the front, shift A, add in a camera, control alt zero, snap that camera to view, and we'll hit G just to move it up. And then we can also get this front to be a little bit longer because my camera isn't really doing very well with it. And then now we have a nice view on our, um, our kinetic typography piece. Let's go ahead and start shading and lighting. So I'm gonna make sure that I am in the EV render engine right up here. I'm gonna hit Z rendered, nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and get in an area light. Bring that area light up. We're gonna scale it up a little bit and then bring up the brightness. I'm gonna sh hit Shift D, and then I'm gonna hit G to just kind of move him around, and then R, click R twice to point him where you want him to be, so he's pointed there, and then I'm gonna get this guy here, Shift D, and then move him over. Oop, I shrunk him. I'm gonna move him over. I'm gonna get my uh, floor to be back a little bit, and then bring this guy here, and this is what we're calling a key light, and that's gonna give some reflections right here on the back which is always really nice, and a lot of professional photographers use that setup, so it's really good. I'm gonna hit R twice, just again, to move everything around. And then let's get our shading really quick. So we're gonna click, all right, so here on this big piece, we're gonna make it a black little box. So all the way black, and then no roughness, or if you bring a little bit of roughness, kinda makes it look rubbery, which kinda works, but either way, I really like no roughness on that. And then on all the text, we're gonna click New, we're gonna go here to white, and then we're gonna bring the roughness down and then add that material to all of the text. And then on the floor, that same white material. Now the reason why we made that, now the reason why we added all the shading and didn't finish up the lighting is because the shading always affects the lighting. We need to make sure we have everything set up so that a light, the lights can be accurately um, edited. So we'll go here to the area light and then here on the top one, make it nice and bright. And then here on the one right here, it's already bright enough. And then this one on the back, make it really bright. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is it's a little bit too contrasty. 
So I'm gonna click this little world icon and bring the color up just a little bit. Being that this is mo motion graphics, you can cut corners like that and it still looks fine. So we have this gray world happening. So it really kind of makes everything look nice. Lastly, I don't really like how you can see this area light in the reflection here. So I'm just gonna bring him up and it's gonna be perfectly fine like that. Let's go ahead and animate this guy very quickly. So we're gonna click on our empty. I'm gonna give myself uh, 240 frames. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit the back arrow so we don't have a duplicate frame while we're rendering. And then right here on the rotation again, just like that. So we'll click the little keyframe icon, click to the end and type in 360, 260 and then we'll click that. And you're gonna see it is gonna be kind of laggy. I'm supposed to be at 30 frames a second and we're at eight frames a second. So that's just a little problem you're gonna have. But as long as it's 360 degrees, it is gonna be rotating just fine. And this is gonna look really, really nice, really clean and really cool. We can click on all, all those gizmos and everything is working just fine in our animation. And there you go. For the render settings, keep everything at default unless you wanna have higher than 1920 by 1080. We'll go down here to the render settings to FFmpeg video or PNG sequence, whatever you like. I'm a big fan of this one if we're just rendering an EV. Click where you would want to save the file. Here on encoding, go from MP4, I mean from that to MP4, and then medium quality to perceptually lossless, save your file and ex export it out right here if you just go to render, render animation. And when you're done, you will have a really cool animation just like mine, and it's really cool. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something, and thank you for watching.